and welcome to the Feeling Good Podcast, where you can learn powerful techniques to change the way you feel. I am your host, Rhonda Borowski, and joining me here in the Murrieta studio is Dr. David Burns. Dr. David Burns is a pioneer in the development of cognitive behavioral therapy and the creator of the new team therapy. He is the author of Feeling Good, which has sold over 5 million copies in the United States and has been translated into over 30 languages. David is currently an emeritus adjunct professor of clinical psychiatry at Stanford University School of Medicine. Welcome everyone to podcast 160. La 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 Feeling good. Well, <laughs> um, this is going to be a really exciting and different podcast episode. Uh, before we begin, I want to give a shout out to my son, Josh Freund. When I took over the role of hosting the podcast, I didn't have any editing and very limited technological skills. And still has very limited <laughs> editing and technological skills. And I was constantly calling my son up, asking him for advice, or crying when I made mistakes, uh, because he's a professional film and video maker uh, living in New York City, and he just um, graciously took over all of the editing roles for the podcasts, and I just really want to thank him and appreciate him. Yeah, I want to thank you too, Josh. It's been incredibly helpful uh, <laughs> yeah. to us, to say the least, but I mean that in a serious way. Yeah. We're very, very grateful for helping us out in, in this way. Um, so who do we? Who are our guests today? Oh, do we say hello, Rhonda? No, we haven't. Okay, hello, uh, Rhonda. And hello, David. And again, <laughs> Hello, welcome. Brandon. Hello, David. Hello, hello Rhonda. Rhonda. Hello, David. Hello, Rhonda. <laughs> So today we have two extraordinary people. We have Brandon Vance, who is an extraordinary musician, a lyric writer, and music writer and songwriter in general, who's also a team psychiatrist with a private practice in Oakland. And we have Heather Clegg, who is an extremely creative singer and improviser, also a team psychiatrist with a private practice in Oakland. And even though these names are going to age me, they kind of remind me of Jerry Garcia and Joni Mitchell. <laughs> <laughs> because their talents are so, um, they're so multi-talented that they cover many, many areas in the creative spheres. So thanks, Rhonda. They're going to be singing songs that Brandon wrote, and take it away, Brandon. And we have one. Oh, and we have one. Sorry, I forgot. We have one like really cool letter that David got um, that I want to read to everyone from an interested reader. It says, "Dear Dr. Burns, I'm a millennial living in Washington D.C. Your book, Feeling Good." is amazing. I wish I had read it in high school. I recommend it to everyone and bought a copy for both of my parents and my siblings. It should be required reading for every high school student in America. Thanks again, Dr. Burns. Best regards, Brian. Brian. Well, thank you, Brian. It just touches my heart to get that uh, wonderful letter that you sent. It means, means a lot to me. Appreciate it. All right, now take it away, Brandon mm. and Heather. Well, these are, yeah, these are songs that Heather and I both wrote. And also I wrote with Amy Spector, who was on your podcast. And I think um, a, about they a month or so with ago. Amy. So Amy and I wanted playful ways to support people in developing skills to be and stay emotionally well. And we started a little, um, a little organization called Gameful Mind and in doing that, we were just in this mood of making playful kind of ways about uh, about emotional health. And we were both studying David Burns team therapy. And so we decided to make a song about some of the stuff we were learning. So we'll play that later. And then and then Heather and I started collaborating. So maybe you can say something about that. Yeah, well, Brandon, it was a uh before the intensive a few years ago, and you uh, sent out a note to our group about making songs. Mm. And um, uh, the song Sound of Silence, I guess, was in my head. And I thought, oh, that sounds like the feel of failure. And I then we just sort of pinged back and forth and came up with the lyrics mm. to the tune of that song. And uh, it seemed very germane, because one of the things that David has uh, taught us so well is about the importance of letting go of the ego. And often that feel 
that feeling of having the ego die can be very painful, but there's this glorious enlightenment that happens afterwards. And that's kind of what this song's about. And then in addition, maybe just to throw in my impoverished two cents, yeah. being rather non-musical, and deeply appreciative of you folks and uh, these great songs that you've created, that uh, the feeling of failure is really the the essence of of depression and a lot of anxiety, performance anxiety too. It's just the idea that that I'm not good enough. And there's a lot of different methods we use to help people crush that thought or get mm. transcendence relief from that thought. Laughter is a great way. A lot yeah. of the team techniques, externalization of voices, acceptance paradox, on and on. Those are fabulous tools. But also music is another way of touching mm. both the heart and the mind. That's why I'm so intensely uh, admiring of, of the beautiful music you folks have, have created and, and really appreciative. Mm. Thanks, Dave. Yeah, it's been so fun to do this at some mm. of the intensives that you had. Well, let's jump in and hear your first song. Can you give me my note, Brenda? Hello, failure, my old friend I've come to talk with you again Because my ego softly creeping Infects my thoughts while I am preaching And that vision that was planted in my brain Still remains, becomes the fear of failure Fool said I you are so lame Done something wrong to feel this shame Perfect is the way that you should be Self blame coming like a tsunami Negative thoughts 100% on my DML I was in hell, suffered the fear of failure. My self-esteem had turned to shit. I needed the magic button hit. But something told me my feelings weren't lame. Began to do a positive reframe. Maybe my feelings say something about me that is pretty fly I set the bar high So I have a feel of failure I saw that I was not alone Dare go beyond my comfort zone I took pride in my humility Welcome my faults as my humanity And in a moment of enlightenment I cried and then I laughed I finally grasped The wisdom of the field Of failure Oh, that was awesome. Wow. Heather, did you help write that too? Uh, I did. I did. Heather was the main force behind that one. Yeah. Nice. I kind of came up with the first round and then Brandon scooped it up. And Nice. Cool. Hmm. So, Brandon, you and Heather have played at the intensives. You played at several intensives, if I recall. And can yeah. you tell us what that's about? Like, why do you do that? Yeah, it's just fun. So it's fun to have like a playful interlude, I think. And it was a fun way for us to both play with some of the ideas that we were learning. And then I think Heather took it to another level with this song. I think that the song is not only about, like we say, DML, which is daily mood log, but it also gets to some of the tender difficulties with this feel of failure. And I, and I think that it, it brought it to a really real level. Some of the songs we've just, we've had a range. We've played with just the ideas of the techniques and some of the names of them. Some of them, we get deeper into them, but it's been really fulfilling. Yeah, if I, um, 
because I, I think this song really embodies the acceptance paradox that the feeling of failure is not the enemy that we're trying to make disappear. In fact, it can be a signal that we're about to do something really awesome. And fears of failure are kind of to be expected if you're trying something challenging. I have a, two, two questions. What's this intensive you guys are referring to? Some of our uh, listeners will know, but most will not. It's intense. <laughs> it's, <laughs> what is it? This is a, a four-day training that, that, that you do, David. Um, well, that's and right. I've only, I remember that. that that's right. <laughs> to remind you. <laughs> Just this summer. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, the ones I've gone to have been in South San Francisco, but there are four days of diving into team therapy with testing, empathy, agenda setting, and methods, and really getting a lot of training coming out with really good usable skills. Yeah, I think I've been to four intensives uh, of your intensives, David, and I think Rhonda has been to six. Six, yeah, and they just keep getting better and better. And um, this was the best one ever. It's last mm-hmm. summer, mm-hmm. and I mean, I, I, it blows my mind because I think, oh, I know team therapy, and then each time I learn something new, and then it's also such a joy to reconnect with the community that you've created. Well, I have a question for you guys. Mm-hmm. Uh, Guys and gals. I guess you can say guys to a mixed gender. Yeah, I think so. Um, But uh, sometimes people write music, and the best music, because it comes from the heart. It comes from from a personal experience, not just clever words put together. Mm. And I'm wondering if, if, if you, Brandon, have ever felt like a failure, or you, Heather, or Rhonda has, or if David yeah. Burns has. Absolutely. I mean, the, the way it resonates for me is sometimes really at this point in my life, I'm 48 years old. I, I've always wanted a family. I've always wanted kids and I don't have one. And, and that's where it hits for me. Sometimes I feel like I've really failed in this big part of my life. That's really important to me. And that's, yeah. that, that's it's, when you feel like a failure, it's pretty, pretty painful. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it feels yeah. real. Yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah. yeah. My, my son feels that same concern too mm. and you like yourself he's handsome and has so many mm. things going for him and women are kind of attracted to him he's kind of a chick magnet mm-hmm. he seems and like i imagine you are too <laughs> uh, but uh, it, it, we all have some area or, or many where, where we just feel like we're we're not good enough and sometimes yeah. we might do a whole podcast on that theme of i'm not good mm-hmm. enough and what are the ways of of you know, letting the ego die and, and, and transcending that. But I, mm. I love when you say that because it's mm. it's personally mm. real and touching. Mm. 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 Yeah, wow, we're getting vulnerable today. <laughs> 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 yeah, I struggle a lot with feelings of failure and um, uh, they've helped me grow tremendously. Um, and uh, Rhonda has really inspired me um, because she's incredibly brave and takes on things that are really hard. And, uh, yeah, I really followed, feel like I followed in her footsteps. She got me teaching team therapy um, and has really mm. been an uh, incredibly mm. good friend and supporter in my journey of learning team. In fact, she also was the person who encouraged me to start coming on your Sunday hikes. And we've gone to the Gates of Hell together on a Sunday hike. That we have. That we have. Yeah. Yeah. I've, uh, I got unhappily divorced uh, several years ago and have been still kind of sorting through that and you've helped me with my dating strategies and with parenting questions um so definitely team has been profoundly helpful to me personally you've been incredibly courageous and open and vulnerable and really jaw-dropping uh let me ask you too another question then we'll get back to the music which is more what it's about but you two are psychiatrists so in the eyes of society you're some lofty you know, on the sitting on the throne of society or something like that. Are you saying that psychiatrists can sometimes feel like a failure? For sure. <laughs> <laughs> I think failure is sort of an equal opportunity feeling. <laughs> yeah. And I, I'm a little suspicious of people who don't, you know, mm. encounter that feeling on a regular basis. I mean, there's something else that makes me think of, which is uh, is what you've talked about as the achievement addiction, David, and I think the feel of the fear of failure and that that feeling can kind of drive that sometimes, like for me. And so that might have been in a way behind like pushing myself. I wasn't sure that I wanted to go to medical school and, and, but I kind of wanted to finish it and want to take that challenge. And, 
and kind of pushed myself some. And part of it might have been not wanting to fail, sort of quote, yeah. unquote, fail. Um, so, yeah, certainly psychiatrists <laughs> feel all kinds of feelings. And, and it's nice to be able to, I think you've created a, a place where it feels safe to be vulnerable. And so that's kind of led to me feeling able to be vulnerable on this podcast as well. Yeah, and I think that's a vulnerability can bring us closer mm-hmm. to our, our, our patients, yeah. Our, yeah, our loved ones, our friends, and, and uh, also in, in teaching yeah. uh, to, to, to be more, more real. But it's hard because we think we're going to be judged if we're not good enough. Yeah, mm-hmm. um, yeah. Being more real, I think, is such a... Such an important thing, right? It's so 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 important to be genuine in psychotherapy and in relationships with people. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and that involves some vulnerability. It involves not being perfect. Yeah, which just warms my heart to everything that you guys are saying. And Heather, mm-hmm. I want to thank you for those really kind words. So Heather knows I don't like praise, so <laughs> <laughs> I know I can't resist. <laughs> yeah, you know. Yeah, you you died right on a podcast. Yes, I did. I. I think I could probably die every day a little bit. Yeah. Like with that feel of failure, it's so strong. Sounds like there could be a song in that. Die every day. <laughs> <laughs> die every day. Yeah. yeah, maybe we'll sing that next time. But, you know, you guys seem so creative. What other areas in your life besides singing are, are you involved in with in terms of your creativity um, and expression? Well, I, um, I'm involved with uh, an improv school, um, Berkeley Improv. I'm the administrative force mm-hmm. behind Berkeley Improv. And uh, we run improv classes in Berkeley. And... Um, I think improv is all about shame attacking, um, and we really specialize in bringing people who are new to improv into doing it and really work to keep it safe and inclusive and the idea that anyone can get up and find joy in performing and and in their own creativity and being spontaneous. And it's improv is also a very collaborative activity. It's not about outshining anyone. It's about making other people look good and, and sharing ideas. If any listeners want to join your improv group, I guess we can put contact in the show notes. But who's it open to? Kids? Adults? We have youth classes and we have adult classes, and it's all at berkeleyimprov.com. Okay. How does improv compare, connect with um, mental health? Well, I, I think it's really important that we don't call it therapy because <laughs> um, I think people can maybe spend too much time doing therapy. But I think that improv is a marvelous place to grow and learn and I've been doing improv with my imp- group of improvisers since 2012, and we've, you know, gotten very close. And um, we have dinners together every Monday night. And what do you learn? If uh, I went to improv, what would I learn or uh, hope to learn? Right. Well, you learn about um, trusting yourself, about getting up on stage, and you don't need to prepare. You can, if you're paying attention to the present moment and what other people are saying and the ideas in your own mind, and you put those out there, and you accept and agree and build on those ideas, you can find yourself creating things that you never would have thought you could create. So good improv acting involves not acting, just being genuine. That's right. You know, That's right. Well, it's um, it involves not trying to think and plan too much. It involves really being present in the, in the present moment and paying attention, paying very careful attention. Cool. Brandon, what about you? What other artistic projects are you involved with? The main one right now is called Justice Arts Collective, and that was started by my friend Justino and, and also me and some other people. And now it's connected with Chabot College in California, um, in Hayward. Um, David was just holding up Tune In, Tune Up, which so... But wait, me, wait, wait, before you do yeah. that, what, what's the Justice Arts Collective about? So, <laughs> so, um, so that's a group where we work with students at Chabot College to create musical pieces with social justice themes that are often in the style of hip hop. And we have underlying rhythms that we teach them that are often Latin rhythms. And we went down to Colombia this year to study cumbia, which is a, a Latin rhythm from there. Um, so a lot of the students in our group have experienced a lot of personal trauma and um, there's a lot of social inequity and um, they share kind of, they're just really open, open hearted people sharing a lot of vulnerability in that group, bringing a lot of themselves, a lot of their hearts. And we all create music together. We, we create deep connections. We uh, made a music video together of a song that we wrote about uh, police killings of people of color a few years ago. And then What's we might that hold called? Uh, from Mount Tamil Pius to Fruitvale Station. Is that something we can um, find on the internet? <laughs> thank you, Heather. Uh, yes, it's at justiceartscollective.com. And that'll take you to our YouTube video. 
and justicearts.collective.org will take you to our Facebook page. So we might do workshops with people to have then discussions about the issues that these bring up. Nice. It's been really fulfilling. And then do you want to tell us about the card game you and Amy Spector created? Yeah. So so as I was saying before, Amy Spector and I have this... Now, who's Amy Spector for the listeners who don't know? So Amy Spector is this wonderfully creative, awesome force of of art and of therapy who was on your podcast on, I think, number 152. Correct. I, I looked it up before we got here. Yeah. And she, um, she and I collaborate really well. We're just, she's so creative and we bounce ideas back and forth. So as part of that, we made a kind of a company in a way called Gameful Mind. And we made this game called Tune In, Tune Up, which is tuning up your ability to tune into each other. And that is a series of cards with instructions. And the instructions might be listening instructions. They also might be something that's working on your ability just to attend. So it might be, I close my eyes, you change something about your appearance, and then I open them and try to guess what it is. So playful ways to get us to tune in more to each other. So we created that game and then ordered a bunch of copies. We have a website, gamefulmind.com, I believe. Um, G-A-M-E-F-U-L-M-I-N-D.com. And had a lot of fun, made some t-shirts. I'm wearing one today that says deeper that we made for a hypnosis conference. And she, we also cool. made ones that say highly suggestible on them. Wow, so, nice. Uh, and Amy made some jewelry that, that was sort of shame attacking jewelry that said like little vulnerable words that you might wear as an earring. Well, let me say so, that all of you are team therapists. And part mm-hmm. of what's cool for me about this is this is new ways the team is coming to life in other formats. Mm-hmm. And so you just mentioned shame attacking jewelry. Now, mm. some of our listeners know what a shame attacking exercise is. But probably most mm. wouldn't know what that means. What, what, what is that, Brenda? That yeah. sounds like a cool thing. <laughs> <laughs> I think it is a cool thing. It's a very fun and energizing thing, but very difficult. So I think of shame attacking as um, if I'm ashamed of something, I'm going to go out in public and do something kind of silly, perhaps that challenges some of the social norms and that challenges what I'm ashamed of. So for example, Amy sometimes feels shy and shows she made some earrings that say shy on them. And then other people see that she's shy and she might be embarrassed of the fact that she's shy. Um, And it could be just very playful things. So if I'm, if I have a little social anxiety, if I'm, if I'm embarrassed of myself or think other people might think I'm defective or weird and I go and, um, hand out clown noses on the street, with which I did with a patient of mine the other day, then that's kind of challenging this norm. People don't usually walk up to people and hand out clown noses, but we're actually making connections with people. And this young woman I was working with had a lot of social anxiety. And she was mortified about going up to somebody and interacting with them. But by doing this at the end, we were just having fun and we were laughing because it really opened us up. So let me see if I understand what you're saying. When I was a psychiatric resident, and I've said this often, but I had psychoanalytic supervisors, and we sat in the same room, and I was only allowed to speak twice each session. I could say, Mm -hmm. tell me more twice, and I wasn't allowed to use any Uh more language than that. And this went on and on and on. And so you're saying you can also treat patients by going out with them onto the sidewalk and giving someone a clown nose? Yeah, that's right. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> analytic supervisors didn't, didn't propose those kinds of techniques. They just tell me more. <laughs> they didn't know about clown nose therapy. <laughs> that's cool. Yeah. I think there's a school of therapy called clown nose therapy. Yeah. Hey, well, I have another question just to, because yeah. um, it's a musical podcast. Brandon, what mm-hmm. was the first song you ever played that's related to team? Well, this was called Tiny Anna, and it, or the other name for it is Negative Thoughts, Shut Your Pie Hole Tonight. Mm. So pie hole was an expression some of my fellow residents use just in a playful way in residency to talk about mouth. So it means mouth, the hole that you eat a pie into, right? Oh, Shut your pie hole. Oh, something different. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We don't want to say what we thought it was. <laughs> and so, we thought it was the ear. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah. That's what I thought you thought it was. Right. <laughs> So with this thought, with this um, song, Amy first started writing the words to it. And I wanted to give it a bit of a Southern feel. I'm from North Carolina. And somehow Shut Your Pie Hole kind of sounded um, kind of Southern to me, even though I hadn't heard it there. And then there's a style of singing that we sing it in that also reminds me of certain styles in the South. Oh. And so... 
for me, so it, it's negative thoughts, shut your pie hole tonight. So negative thoughts you can shut up tonight, right? And it's about this idea that you've that really underpins a lot of cognitive behavioral therapy that our negative thoughts are what upset us. It isn't the actual events that upset us. So for example, what it made me think of writing this song was when I was in elementary school, some kids made up the story that I was gay, as if that was a bad thing. And then they started calling me names, throwing things at me, trying to get in fights, all kinds of things. I was bullied. And what, what was really the difficult part for me was that I told myself I was defective. So I, I didn't happen to be gay, and that, but it wasn't, it wasn't about that. It was about me telling myself I was defective. Not good enough. Not good enough. Yeah. Yeah. So it, and then the reason I also think about it with this song is because it's, um, there's a person who I thought was the kind of the ringleader of that, who was this smart, handsome, blue eyed guy who had really good social skills, really confident. And I felt like I wasn't as confident and maybe wasn't as handsome. I don't know. But in my mind, I made him into an, an evil person, just interested in popularity um, but also he had many good qualities. So I, I, I later on realized that I was just putting him into this box because he was involved in this bullying, which was a really mean thing. But yet it was interesting for me to be able to think about it as I'm telling myself I'm defective and I'm reducing him to some things he did in sixth grade, even many years later. And I actually had a, an interaction with him later where I wrote him a letter about this and he responded in a very thoughtful way. And it was really cool to see him as more than that. Nice. So in this, so let me get back to the song. So in this song, the singer is anxious about going to a party. And she's envious of Anna, who's this woman who's thin, which in our culture is supposedly a good thing for women. And she gets a lot of attention. Um, and then she has really good social skills. And the singer is feeling bad about herself or himself, but then realizes it's just her negative thoughts and then sees the advantages to the negative thoughts and, also, and how they're helpful and how they represent good things about her and then works on those thoughts and feels better. So it's really about the negative thoughts. It's not really about who we're calling tiny Anna or these things that we tell ourselves about how we should be in, in culture. It's about it, it, the thing that are harmful it is about what we're telling ourselves that, that might be bad with ourselves or that we should be. And if we can break through those, then we feel much better. Nice. So you're going to sing that one? So we're going to sing that one. And then yeah. for the listener who's slow like me, Tiny Anna here would be somebody that the singer is jealous of. Yeah. Or was je jealous of saying, I'm not as good as Tiny yeah. Anna. Tiny Anna gets all the attention at a party. She is the one everybody goes to. And me as the singer, Heather as the singer, we are anxious about going to a party. We're worried about interacting with people socially. We don't feel like we have good social skills and are worried about being embarrassed there and being maybe left out. Nice, let's hear it. Okay. Can you give me my note? Okay. Tiny Anna, Tiny Anna. Tiny Anna, Tiny Anna. Tiny Anna, you've been getting me down, getting me down, but I know it's not you. It's a negative thoughts. They will never do whatever you're Negative thoughts I can leave behind, behind. You can walk right out of my mind, out of my mind. You can shut your pie hole, you can shut your pie hole. Though you've given me a lot during my days, during my days. But I don't need you now. You can get up and walk right out of that door. And you can shut your pie hole on the way, on the way. You can shut your pie hole tonight, tonight. La da la la da da la da. La da la 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 la. Shut your pie hole tonight You've been talking since the dawn's early light You're an expert An attention getter You're quite the side Oh Anna, please teach me To talk at a party like they're talking on the TV screen 
Now I'm gonna say something and it may not be polite Cause I've realized that I've got some work to do But this time I'm not gonna shut down and stew My negative thoughts are bothering me Much more than Annalise So negative thoughts shut your pie hole tonight Negative thoughts, you've served me well Kept me from being in a social situation hell Rejection comfortably kept at bay I don't have to put myself out there I can keep myself at home without judgments to fear They can let me off the hook No effort to change To learn new things, swim in another lane Negative thoughts you kept me safe But it's time to try my mind on a different train Man, I don't need negative thoughts and their kind So tell me if I can have a good time Oh, I can be myself And go at my own With these tiny negative thoughts flapping their tiny lips in my face Negative thoughts that there's no room in this world for my kind That's just bullshit created by my negative mind I laugh about awkward autocorrects, weird how and farty So why not enjoy the people at the party? So negative thoughts shut your pie hole tonight Negative thoughts you've served me well Negative thoughts farewell Negative thoughts shut your pie hole tonight Tiny Anna will surely get some attention That may be true, but that doesn't mean I won't get affection Even if I don't have things to say I'll learn to chit-chat the end away So negative thoughts shut your pie hole tonight Negative thoughts shut your pie hole tonight That's right, negative thoughts shut your pie hole tonight Cause I wanna have some fun. Yay! Brandon, do you write the words and music to that? Uh, Amy and I wrote the words and I wrote the music. That is incredible. Yeah. It's so yeah. beautiful. <laughs> Thank you. Wow, it's so it's touching. Fun to play. It, it was fun to work on with Heather, so we developed some harmonies on it. Oh, nice. It really creates fun. a different feel about our group. Yeah. Um, mm. You know what I mean? I absolutely. I mean, it feels like my heart's going to burst out of my chest. Yeah. Yeah, and you know, you're you're making so many great points about team therapy, but you're doing it in a really fun way that's so easy to hear, mm. and it just goes straight to the heart. It's awesome. We we've got to close. Fortunately, we have you for the next podcast, which is going to be listening to a different kind of music. It would be, I think, amazingly helpful and interesting to people. One last question I have here. So you're both psychiatrists, and probably some of your patients will will be listening and in awe of the you know your creativity and the beautiful music. But how do you feel about the fact you're saying here, and uh, you know there'll be thousands of people who will hear this this podcast, and you're saying that you've sometimes felt like a failure and looked into the chasm of darkness and self doubt and despair yourself. Mm. Aren't your patients going to kind of lose respect for you and say, well, I'm being treated by a sicko? <laughs> <laughs> by an imperfect psychiatrist. You know, I'm, I'm, I have some apprehension about that, but I think that's really from my training where we were supposed to be a pretty blank slate. So you're yeah, supposed I was told, to not... don't ever let yeah. a patient know about any feeling. Don't ever answer any question whatsoever. Yeah. Yeah. There was actually a, a mentor of mine in residency who encouraged the opposite, who did encourage us to add some self-disclosure. But those that training to, to not do that really sticks hard. So 
that being said, I feel like it's it's really a good thing to show that I'm a genuine person. I can have I have difficulties as well, and and I work on some things on myself. I'm not perfect, and I can meet someone in a genuine way. What do you think? Yeah. That? Also, that we've got tools to show you the way out of the yeah. forest. I've been there. Yeah. I know where you're at, and I know how to get you out of that place. Exactly. Right. That we've yeah. walked the walk, right? Yeah. And uh, yeah. Exactly, that we're all human and that all of us can be healed. Yeah, but we'll ask. Well, people can write in and tell us tell us what they think. Yeah, but I think you'll find you have many, many fans, including mm-hmm. the two, the three really that you're looking at right now, <laughs> Rhonda and Dave and David. So thank you so so much. We well we ha- as we close the David, can you? We're going to close a different way this episode so can you read um the upcoming workshops that yeah you just a real quickie that there's uh, two upcoming workshops if you want to get some training and ce credits one is uh going to be on october 6th which has come right around the corner uh, from the time this podcast is published and i'm going to be doing it with jill levitt on advanced empathy uh, training to help therapists as well as everyone connect better with your patients, your loved ones, your friends. And this is a workshop that therapists may think they don't need, that that you think you're good at empathy, but you do need this uh, way more than than you realize. And and my co-teacher, Dr. Jill Levitt, is one of the greatest communicators, in my opinion, in the world. Uh, she's she's a fa- she's just fantastic, and you're you're going to love that. And then November f- four to seven in Atlanta, Georgia is going to be the last intensive. You mentioned the intensives uh, earlier, and that one's sponsored by Praxis. Uh, it it'll hopefully be as tremendous as the as the one in Calgary was this summer, and the one in San Francisco. To learn more, just go to my website, feelinggood.com, and there is a workshop tab, and you'll find all about them. There's a, you can link for registration and, and all the details. Are you guys going to sing this song? Mm-hmm. Yeah, we'll start it, and then you can continue, Rhonda. Uh, um, uh, are yeah. you going to post the video that Brandon made of us uh, on your website? We'll see if we can. Yeah. Okay, because we have a funny Five Secrets song. And, uh, okay. Mm-hmm. So we were saying no resistance, no cry on this one. Oh, this is a great one. To the one. tune of no woman, no cry. <laughs> and just about therapeutic resistance. Yeah. Do you want to say a little bit about that, David? Well, the key of, 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 of team therapy is melting away resistance yeah. in the most unexpected way. And the moment your resistance is gone, a healing voice will come out of your brain and recovery is often just minutes just minutes away it's been the, the the hugest development of team therapy and it's brought healing to many and I, I i believe will bring healing to many more in the future including a lot of people who are listening to this podcast and, and hurting and feeling depressed and anxious and hopeless mm-hmm. yeah no resistance no cry no resistance no cry no resistance, no cry. No resistance, no cry. But I like resistance so much. No resistance, no cry. It says such good things about me. No resistance, no cry. Heather, Rhonda, David, and uh, Dave can add in as well as I'm trying to coordinate playing the guitar and speaking at the same time. No resistance, no cry. You can add up, make up your own lyrics. No resistance, no cry. But resistance makes me feel so good. It makes me feel like I can identify with my negative emotions. No resistance, no cry. No, oh, I want to hate myself. <laughs> no resistance, no cry. such good things about you, David. <laughs> No resistance, no cry. But depression is so comfortable sometimes. No resistance, no cry. I want to yes but you when you try to help me. <laughs> no resistance, no cry. But anxiety says I care. No resistance, no cry. No resistance. This no has been resistance, another podcast no of the Feeling Good. I'm sorry. This has been another episode of the Feeling Good podcast. 
For more information, visit Dr. Burns' website at feelinggood.com, where you will find the show notes for this podcast, and where you can leave, and many other podcasts, all of the other podcasts, and where you can leave your comments and questions. The website has abundance of resources for therapists, as well as non-therapists, including books, workshops, and online training groups around the world, and much more. I'm your host, Rhonda Borowski, and I invite you to join us next time for another episode of the Feeling Good Podcast. Thank you, Rhonda. Thank you, Brandon. No Thank you, Heather. No resistance, no cry. cry. <laughs> Thank you so much. <laughs>